If you're watching this video, then there's a very good chance that you know exactly how inconvenient it can be to try to take your entire gaming PC setup on the road with you when you go on a trip. And that is exactly the problem that I'm trying to solve. Now, what you just watched was me put together a gaming computer inside of a server rack case, which I then put inside of my server in my server closet. That computer has a Ryzen 3 1200, a 1060, four gigs of RAM, a Corsair 550 watt power supply, and an SSD to boot off of. Now I read up and did some research on different ways that you can remotely connect to a gaming PC and try to game. The first and seemingly easiest way to do it was if you're on the same home local network, you can connect over Windows remote desktop. So that's what I did first. All right, keep in mind, honey, that I am playing with some severe lag. Keep in mind. What's your ping? What's your ping? Uh, I just, I found some slight issues. What? Oh, you're dry. What the, what are you doing? No, I needed, I needed to adjust. No, oh, this is bad. What are you doing? Uh. We're just falling. Did I drop? <laughs> yes, you're jump master. Oh, this yeah. is bad. This is bad. Where are you going? <laughs> that is the ocean! <laughs> so, I'm not actually controlling anything right now. Um, now, it's really hard to make out exactly what's going on in the video there, but what effectively is happening is the mouse is not staying uh, attached to the remoted in computer. So, it's not staying attached to my gaming computer that I'm remoted into. The problem with that is, is that if I go too far to one side, the mouse will actually go off of that screen and stop playing Apex and then go on to my next monitor. So because the mouse does not actually stay attached to that computer, it causes a lot of issues for gaming. As you can imagine, as you're trying to look around, you go too far to one direction, your mouse is no longer on the monitor anymore, and your person's just sitting there. Like, he's not looking anymore because you're not on that screen. And so I had to find some sort of tool that would allow my mouse to stay specifically in the game, even though I'm only remoted into the computer. So this pretty quickly tossed out Windows Remote Desktop because it just wasn't easy. There was no simple way to accomplish this, which led me to step number two, which was Chrome Remote Desktop. I saw a lot of really good reviews about that. When I tried it, it worked really well. I was able to get into the computer very quickly. It allowed me to just have control over that computer to where my mouse wouldn't go on any of my other monitors. The big problem was just that it was slow. It was so unbearably slow that it was just not even worth recording what was going on like it was literally just jitters it was something that would instead of providing you more information about what was going on annoy you more than anything so I, I i decided to omit that but i felt like it was worth including because it was something that i did try even though it didn't work very well now the third and final program thing that i tried was steam remote play got control all right i think it should work this time I'm doing the uh, Steam remote play. <laughs> oh, I can actually do stuff. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. It, you know, it's it's a cool concept. I really do like the concept. But I've got to up that resolution a little bit. I missed most of that. I eliminated one how? Oh my gosh, I got it. You got no, it. No way. Yeah, I think got the monitor I either have it at 1080 or 1440. Either way, I know it's higher than 720. And I have to say that this by far worked the best. It allowed me to uh, launch the program through Steam on my computer here, and it would actually run on the other computer halfway across my house it would allow me to just see that screen. I didn't have anything else that I was messing with. The downside is that I could not control the screen resolution. Now, you might be wondering, why is that a big deal? Well, the problem is that my monitor that I'm using here is a 1440p monitor, which is relatively high resolution. The computer that I put in my server room does not have a monitor attached to it because it's just a server. It's just a computer with a power connection and an internet connection. So because of this, the screen that I was playing on was defaulted to 720p, which is an incredibly low resolution relative to the monitor I was trying to play on. So it made it pretty difficult initially. I did, however, come up with a solution. If you launch the game in Steam Remote Play and then go to Chrome Remote Desktop and remote into the computer, open up NVIDIA Control Panel, and then uh, select a custom resolution that you make, 
um, set it to 1440p or whatever you want to, then that will be the resolution of the game you're playing in Steam Remote Play. So you sort of have to jump back and forth between a few things to get a higher resolution, but it can be done. Now there were two downsides to this. The first downside was the first time I did this, I lost my mouse. In the Steam Remote Play, I no longer was able to see where my mouse was, um, which made it pretty difficult to control the game. And the second thing about this is it also made the game substantially slower. 720p ran really, really well, but you couldn't see it very much. Once I bumped it up to 1440, it made it incredibly difficult to do anything uh, because it was really jittery. Uh, the sound was probably the hardest part. Like you couldn't notice the jitter as much in the actual gameplay, but the volume coming from the computer that I'm remoted into was, was jittery and kind of cut off. Overall though, I will say, I kind of count this as a success. I felt like I was able to remote into a computer, play a game like I wanted to um, from a, in an entirely different computer. So overall, definitely a success. There are a couple of upgrades that I'm planning on making on this computer in the future. Number one, I want to add an actual storage drive so that I can store my Steam drive on here. But the SSD I have in there right now is not very large. Um, the second thing I want to add is more RAM to the computer because it just, it doesn't really have enough to get by. I also want to look at maybe upgrading the graphics card in it because even though a 1060 is a good graphics card, it probably can't handle very many more resource intensive games, especially when you're streaming that game to another computer. So there you have it. It is possible to remote into a computer and play games, not maybe necessarily exactly like you would as if you're playing the games on the computer you're actually on, but it is possible. If you have any suggestions, questions, or anything else you want to talk to me about, please leave those down in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.